welcome back to Adventure Now. After a passage, we are always so excited to explore our new surroundings, but never before has it felt so good to step onto terra firma as it did this time following our shake, rattle and roll on the way up from the Faroe Islands. Hello Norway, it's so good to be here, and hello Buddha, we have stumbled into you and your relaxed pace on this gorgeous sunny day. After we arrived, a few people commented that we must have had a lot of fun out in that gale. Well, I'm not sure if that really constitutes fun, but the people of Buddha do know a thing or two about the wind. One cool local guy called Ben said to us that whenever the wind stops blowing, the people in Buddha fall over. With everyone back on their feet, men, women, children and furry little friends were free to enjoy the sunshine. Fooled by the piper into the rat race, the pain is etched on many a face. Pain of the pressure, the fear of losing out, but losing to who? What is it about? Dust off those dreams, take them down from the shelf. The greatest loss of all is the loss of yourself. Let the Norwegian adventure begin. Cool yours. Thank you, Buddha. Beautiful big swan there. That's one of the original Volvo Ocean race boats that went into the Legends race a few years ago, I believe. Gorgeous thing. One of the prettiest boats I think I've ever seen. And away we go. Going north again, Ashy. We're always going north. Just coming round the cardinal there to the northeast. There's no rocks in there, so we'll stick on the right hand side so we can pass anything port to port. You may have noticed that Asher is spending more and more time behind the wheel, and that means a lot more hard graft on the deck for me. But fortunately, I love playing with fenders and lines, so it really isn't a problem. And this is all being orchestrated by me, the captain. I am not losing control. Uh, yes, Captain Krasuska. Yes, sorry, I I'll scrub the toilets again. C coming now. Our first Norwegian fish. Greedy little pollock. You can go and swim, mate. This is our first experience of a pretty tight channel coming in here. We can see the really blue water where it's very shallow here. I reckon the channel's about 100 feet wide in places into our first anchorage of Norway. On the way up from the Faroe Islands, it was strange looking at the chart and seeing that we had thousands of metres of water below the keel. And yet here we are in these narrow Norwegian channels, looking at the sandy bottom, now just a few metres below. It's lovely creeping in here. Seems like a very strange little world that we've come into. I love it. And now we can see all the sandy bottom coming up because we've only got four metres here and we're about half a mile away from the anchorage, uh, I don't know what it's going to look like, but I have high hopes. It's really cool coming through here. We are going on the inside of the pontoon because there are no spaces in the anchorage. We made a 35 mile hop from Buda up the coast and came to Nordskot. It's a really cool spot. I love this life. Poland is going to talk to Poland about the sauna, or sauna, as she likes to say. Oh look, she's got a massive cod. It's a huge cod. What? Is this a gift from Poland to Poland? Yeah. Well, there you are. Polish hospitality in Norway. Yes. <laughs> well, that's nice. We've got our wish. We've got nine or ten knots of breeze. We've got the sails up. Wind just forward of the beam, nice and flat. And this is our first sail between destinations in Norway. Quite mild, which I'm surprised about. I thought it would actually be colder, although we are dressed in foul weather gear. Got a couple of yachts in there. Hope there's room at the inn. 
following recommendation from Ben, a local guy from Buda. We are just sailing into Skrova and the view that is unfolding in front of us is just so awesome. It's like a postcard of Norway. The visitor's pontoon seems to be full of Norwegian. Picture postcards are sweet enough, but being moored in the middle of one is even sweeter. It's four meters deep and it's as clear as a swimming pool and teeming with life. Welcome to the island of Skrova. Well, this is a steep gangplank. No good in the ice or in the whiskey. I used to be a solo sailor and seeing beautiful sights was special. But now it's even more special that I get to share them with Asha. And more special again that we can share them here with all of you. I know, I know, here he goes again, losing man points hand over fist. But it's true, there is something very special about experiences that are shared. And none of us are that different. We're all faced with challenges in this life as we try our best to navigate through it. So surely if we come together, share experiences, spread positivity and love, we can start to heal this crazy world and in return, this beautiful world and all of its nature will heal us. There is no doubt in my mind that we are better together than we can be alone. Here we go again. It's a one night stop strategy at the moment. Beautiful place, absolutely beautiful place. And today we're bound inland into the first big fjord of our Norwegian trip. Well, it's changed pretty dramatically. We're now off the sea and we've come into the fjord. We've got this big landmass alongside us here and that really marks the start of us going inland and ahead, snow-capped mountains, I think it's going to close in on us and be pretty spectacular. We're going to find an anchorage I hope tonight. The only thing we need to do is make sure that we have 4G because Asha needs that for work. Uh, we're going to enjoy finding our way up here with the tide underneath us which is lovely and enjoy Norway, up close. We are approaching our first anchorage in Norway in a lovely secluded space and I'm so looking forward to seeing it because it looks like it's surrounded with mountains. I didn't really know what to expect sailing into these big fjords, but if I could have tapped into my childish imagination and drawn it, I would have drawn this. I can see the bottom. We are about to drop the anchor for the first time in Norway in this beautiful anchorage. Is this place real or are we dreaming? Or maybe I have tapped into my childish imagination. In the film American Beauty, Ricky Fitz says that sometimes there is so much beauty in this world that he finds it hard to take. I understand. This place is overwhelming and the beauty just keeps coming. In such a beautiful place where it never gets dark, 
it's very hard to go to bed. But after a peaceful night at anchor, the next day we moved further north, aided by a very swift tide that was tearing through the fjord. You can probably tell that we are making an effort to get north in order to reach our jumping off point for Svalbard. But after looking at Google Earth, we spotted an anchorage that we simply had to visit and it didn't disappoint. Picking our way through this very, very tight little spot here to find our anchorage. It's uh, pretty nerve wracking. I feel like strangely nervous and yet calm knowing that we are going to push through this gap. We've got 10 meters now and we've got a big rock right there, a narrow little gap. We've had some awesome anchorages but this one might just be the cream on the cake so far. But never say it's the best because we don't know what's around the corner. But this is sweet. Gorgeous little spot we've landed at here. It's quite strange because when the sun goes in, the hat and gloves come out. As soon as the sun's out, it's really, really warm. So we're just going to have a little wander around this flat sandy part. And there's a nice little beach further over that way. So we might try and find that as well. Flying the drone always makes me nervous. And here it was behaving very erratically. And I think that is to do with being closer to Magnetic North. But we had to get it up in the air in order to see this beautiful place from above. I guess you know the world has changed when you can pick an anchorage from Google Earth rather than a chart. Happy to get the drone back in our hands, we retired to Altor for another peaceful night at anchor before resuming our journey north in the morning. Without the sunshine, it gets really chilly. But it's still okay. What a cracker! On the move again, 1 p.m., 35 miles to go today to another anchorage or maybe a pontoon. We don't know yet. We do need some water. We may need a couple of supplies, but we're in pretty good nick. Eight hours or so today to the next destination. It's certainly got chillier. We're now almost on a latitude with Tromso and it's cold today. It's cold. Sun's gone in. That wind is northerly and it is chilly. All those seagulls, there was a huge bait ball of small fish that they're all diving on. We thought it might be something a bit more interesting, like a whale, but no, not yet. Here we are. This is our new home for the night. Ready for celebrations? It's Friday. Rizoholm is a cool little village in the Andoy municipality. And while we were here, two things happened. And this is how I run my ship. If Asha thinks I need a haircut, she cuts my hair. If Asha thinks I need a beard trim, she trims my beard. And stay tuned, because if Asha thinks I should wear a pink dress, you'll probably see that here too. Fresh from having my ears lowered, we found a really cool cafe for bacon and eggs under the watchful guard of a local troll. And then, just like the local muscle car, it was time to hit the road. These places that we sail to continue to amaze me. I still can't quite fathom how I always spent my time sailing in Suffolk and Essex rivers and now we're alongside snow-capped mountains and coming into a very small island here called Roya I think the very very strong tide we're going to try and get in there we haven't timed it perfectly but hopefully we can and apparently there's a pontoon in there that we can moor up on and we intend to stay there for a couple of days I found the perfect house. Yes, it is Altor. But second in the running is this lovely house here. And I say house, but let's call it a houseboat on this dock in the middle of nowhere 
with a lovely solid fuel burner that we're cooking our dinner on. Vegetarian sausages and mash. Very comfortable little area here. It's super warm in here actually, isn't it? My face is burning. <laughs> Look, you're very red and you're about to open the champagne. Yes. Because we need to celebrate being in this absolutely wonderful spot just about eight miles away from Tromso, which is in that direction. So, Ashi, crack that bottle open. Let's raise a toast to you, Altor, and I. And oh, I our, thought it was going to pop. <laughs> and our upcoming trip to Svalbard. Nothing but pure class, plastic beakers, no champagne flutes here, but that will do me very nicely. Thank you very much. Well, cheers to that. Cheers. One of the toughest things about mooring this boat is my impatience. We get all the way into the dock and then we decide if we're going port or starboard side two and then Asher goes around and gets the line sorted out very efficiently and very well and I stand here doing absolutely nothing other than keeping the boat still, being very impatient, thinking why can't she do it ten times quicker? But she doesn't need to do it ten times quicker, I just need to be ten times more patient. I think that's probably a sentiment that most people behind the wheel of a boat feel and we could all do with calming down a bit I would say. Come on, get it sorted out, what are you waiting for? <laughs> there is a sauna. Sauna. There is a sauna. Hi Leah, I'm very pleased to see you in Tromso. Looking forward to your crew arriving. Well, it's Tromso. <laughs> What a whirlwind of a journey it's been, getting up to Tromso. We reconnected with Ed and Beth on board Leah, where the exploitation of captains continued, and Ed and Beth were joined by their third crew member for the trip to Svalbard, Bear Island, Sam Holmes. No, I haven't seen any bears. Thank you very much for watching and joining us on our journey. Please come back next time when we push off for Svalbard. Or mad or what are you? Of course you don't know. She's ginger. You've got no idea.